Hi SQL folks, welcome to another tutorial from SQL Maestros. You have probably heard about the SQL Server Performance Tuning Masterclass, the recordings of which are now available on sqlmaestros.com. The content for this 40 hours class is pretty exhaustive, very detailed and a lot of deep dive stuff. So you have 14 modules in front of you. This is spanned across 40 hours. 10 sessions, 4 hours each session. If you subscribe to the recordings, you get lifetime access. Check this out on sqlmaestros.com. So for today's demonstration, for today's tutorial, I have picked up some content, some code snippet from this masterclass. What we are going to do is talk about something related to plan cache. So what we'll do something, we'll go down to the module, module 11, plan cache and recompilation. Let's get inside. We go inside, we have something called as plan cache, CPU impact and memory impact. Just to let you know, the CPU impact thing was delivered as another video for our uh, members only section, which is available on YouTube. There is a members only list only available to people who subscribe and become members. It's also available if you take premium membership on sqlmaestros.com. But for today's free tutorial, I am going to talk about the plan cache memory impact. In all of these free tutorials, we take a slightly curtailed version of the demonstration. So if you go inside plan cache memory impact, this is the code snippet I am going to demonstrate today, but not the full one, a shortened version because this is all free stuff. Anyway, let's get down and talk about the demo. Where is it? This is here plan cache memory impact. What am I discussing? What are we really talking about? When you send a query to SQL Server, the optimizer will create an execution plan for that query. And that execution plan will remain in the plan cache for some time. I use the term for some time because it might remain in the plan cache as long as SQL Server needs it. And if it has enough memory, in case the memory is short and if SQL Server is required to kick out certain plans from the plan cache, maybe this plan may become a candidate for that. Whatever be the reason, you may assume that the plan in the execution uh, plan cache will have some lifetime. This plan cache is a portion of memory. So you have hundreds and thousands of plans in this plan cache residing in memory. So obviously, you know that when things like IO, CPU, memory are very critical resources for SQL Server, and you don't want that the memory is impacted by a lot of plans remaining in the plan cache that are being unused, so on and so forth. Now, the main objective of this demonstration is to show you how your non-parameterized ad hoc queries will land up creating so many different similar plans and will eat up so much space in the plan cache. And these plans in the execution plan cache will remain unutilized. They will be unused, but will still eat up space in the memory. This is what we term as, you know, memory impact. It hurts. You know, the other video that I was talking about, which is available for our members, shows you the CPU impact in a similar way. So let me just simplify this once more. You have two versions of the ad hoc query, right? There is a simple ad hoc query and there are two versions of it. The first version is non-parameterized. So this is a parameterized ad hoc query. Let's say the query says select star from a table where salesperson ID is equal to something. Let's say you have 100 salesperson, 100 salespeople ranging from one to 100. And then you're executing this query once for each salesperson ID, starting from one all the way to 100. So what you are doing is supplying a parameter value. Salesperson ID is equal to one, two, three, four, so on. If this ad hoc query is non-parameterized, SQL Server will land up creating 100 execution plans, one for each salesperson ID. This is where it hurts. It hurts in terms of memory and it hurts in terms of CPU. If the same ad hoc query is parameterized, things are pretty good. Then you will have only one version of this execution plan and this is really what you want. So let's uh, get down to the demo now and let me show this thing to you in action. Let's first check 
how many plants we have in the plant cache and what is the total size of the plant cache in terms of megabytes. So we simply go down and count the number of plants from this DMV, SysDM exec cache plants and likewise we take the size in bytes for each plan and because it's in bytes we simply divide by 1024 let's just go and look out look at the numbers so right now you can see that there are 1884 about 2000 about 1800 plans in the plan cache and this is the total size about 290 mb that's the plan cache size in real world this goes into thousands and thousands and this goes into gbs right and um, yeah, that's the real world heavy SQL Server production boxes. Now let's just free the proc cache. And once I free the proc cache, and we are doing this only for the purpose of demo, a stern warning, you are not running these statements in your production boxes. This is only for the purpose of demo. Now that I have freed the proc cache, you might expect that the plan cache will reduce considerably, both, both in terms of the number of plans in the plan cache and the size. Let's go check this out. Now you will see that, okay, the number of plants in the plant cache only two and the plant cache size is 192 bytes. That's pretty much it. Let's proceed to the demo. Now look at this query that we have here. Select employee ID, national ID number and a few other attributes from this table employee where manager ID is equal to. Now manager ID equal to we are concatenating and we are getting the manager ID from this local variable at the rate CNT. So there is a literal specified here and we are concatenating and forming our select statement, our SQL query. The CNT variable is declared as integer and we have this ranging from 1 to 100. Now what we do is each time the select query gets formed and then we are executing this query using sp underscore execute SQL and this is running in a loop. Now as I mentioned earlier this is a query with parameter and this is going to be uh, this query is not going to be parameterized which is bad for SQL Server. It's not going to be parameterized. Let's go and execute this. This will take a few seconds for execution and then after this is this execution is done let me do something let's check the plan cache i'll copy this somewhere here after we do the execution okay let's save this all right let's get down to execution let's change the database to adventure works now free the proc cache once more okay let's go and execute this a hundred times now, while this is running, let me talk about a concept in SQL Server. How do you find out execution plans that are similar? Now, you know that I've told you already that there are going to be 100 execution plans created now, one for each version of the query. These queries are similar. These queries are exactly the same, only the parameter ID is different. So SQL Server internally maintains something what we call as query hash. So each query here, each execution plan for this query will have the same query hash. So you can group on query hash and you can find out from the plan cache how many execution plans are there in the plan cache for the same query. This is what we are going to do. So this execution is done and now let's check how many plans we have in the plan cache and what's the total size. So what you will see now that we have 112 plans in the plan cache and the size is about 3 MB. Now these numbers are not very big, but it will give you sense of where things are going wrong. Earlier we just have had single digit plans in the plan cache and now you can see 112 and you know that 100 execution plans have come from this previous execution and how it's impacting memory. But first let's find an evidence that yeah, there really are 100 execution plans for this query. So what you could do is you can go and talk to this DMV, dim exec query stats. This has an attribute called query hash. So you can group on this query hash and we say whenever there is a count greater than one. And of course we do some cross apply to get the text and the plan itself. Let's go and check if we find our query with 100 entries. Yes, we have. 
this is the sample query for your review here we have the sample plan and you know that this is bad this is what you need to investigate if you run this query on your production box it will give you all these execution plans that are similar and they are good candidates for further investigation if they can be parameterized so we have 100 numbers uh, 100 entries as expected and you've seen the plan cache size about 3 mb and the total number of plans um, about 112 so memory impact right now just blow this number up and think about the real world how things go so bad when you run this query, you're going to find dozens and dozens of such candidates. Okay, now let's go and fix this. So we are going to create a parameterized version of this query. We'll do the T-SQL the right way. This is the right way. We form the select statement. So you again have this variable SQL string. You have at the rate count. All that is same. There is a new local variable here called param definition in varchar 500. This is the local variable where we will store our parameter definition. So first we have the SQL statement, all good here. So we say where manager ID is equal to at the rate manager ID. Earlier, if you remember, we said where manager ID is equal to and we concatenated with at the rate CNT, right? So literally we were forming the complete SQL statement like that way. But now we use this parameter at the rate manager ID. But where is this parameter at the rate manager ID? It's defined here. So in this local variable, we say at the rate manager ID data type tiny int. Now we run the while loop. So at the rate count less than or equal to 100, we are again using SP execute SQL to execute the SQL string. But now Apart from just specifying our select statement, which is in this local variable, we also supply the parameter definition, which is this local variable. This has this information, but SQL Server also needs where is the value for at the rate manager ID. This is where the value for at the rate manager ID is coming from. So we say at the rate manager ID is equal to at the rate CNT which means this is the syntax straightforward and if you have multiple parameters this is what you're doing you're loading up all the parameters in this definition and then you supply the values for each parameter separated by comma so it may be at the rate manager id is equal to at the rate cnt uh, cnt then comma at the rate um, country code at the rate postal code whatever so you say the uh, parameter and the value so you might have multiple local variables that way all right all good here let's free the proc cache and now let's run this again this loop and this should do better so let's see what's the memory impact now in the detailed version of this demo, which is part of our masterclass, I go one step further. We go and look into cache stores, PHDRs, and then we are also uh, looking into memory clerks, right? This is what we are doing in the masterclass. We are going deep dive, one level deeper. Okay, looks like this is done. Is it? Yes, done. Okay, let's go and check the plan cache now. Okay, climax time. Let's go and execute this and what you will see bingo there it is so we have four just four execution plans in the plan cache and the size is just 264 bytes look at the amount of memory you have saved from about 3000 uh, bytes uh, kilobytes kb out there you just have 264 bytes there okay what i want to do is okay uh, is okay that was KB sorry so you have like from uh, 3000 uh, KB there to just 264 bytes now what I also want to show you is just this one now count greater than one so our query will not show up the parameterized version so what I want to do is just change it to zero and show you this parameterized query so where do we have our parameterized version this is the one so I should have shown this to you earlier as well look at this how SQL Server has created the parameterized version of this execution plan and while I show this to you why not run this quickly once more the the bad version right the non parameterized version so that I could just show you the 
difference as to how execution plan is treating it. Okay, let's stop this. Okay, there you go. And let's go back and run this and pick up. This is the one. Okay, there you go. Now, see the difference for yourself. We take up a sample query where you can see the manager ID is concatenated with the select statement with the query itself where manager ID is equal to 42 and look at this version. So this is clearly the parameterized version because this has the parameter information Then this is simply something like a constant, like a literal and you have one like this a hundred times one for each manager ID and you have seen the memory impact like two, uh, 300 bytes versus uh, uh, 3000 KB out there and then you have four plans versus 112 plans. So how much memory you are saving? This is all about the memory impact of the plan cache. Now, hope you have liked this video and hope you have learned something new. Two action items for you. One, check out a similar demonstration where I show you the CPU impact. What you've seen right now is the memory impact. This also has bad result on CPU performance. You need to check that in the members list if you're watching this video on YouTube. If you're watching this video on sqlmaestros.com, jump over and join and become a premium member so that you can annually watch our all our advanced tutorials and paid webinars. Either way is fine. The second action item is review the masterclass recordings. Masterclass recordings, this is all that you need. 40 hours of deep dive content focusing on SQL Server internals, troubleshooting and performance tuning. You don't really need multiple courses like fundamentals, mastering, beginners, advanced, intermediate. No, zero to hero. This is all that you need. 40 hours of deep dive content. These are all HD recordings. Once you subscribe, you become a lifetime member, which means you can watch this content anytime, anywhere, as many times as you want. All right, friends, I'm done for today's video. Hope you've enjoyed this. Share this with your friends and colleagues. If you have learned something new, do put down a comment. I would love to read that. Happy SQL. If you like the content, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon so that you're notified on new videos. Most importantly, visit sqlmaestros.com. There's a lot of SQL learning resources out there, video courses, master classes, lab kits, ebooks, blogs, hands-on labs, and a lot more. Follow us on Twitter, at the rate SQL Maestros, and myself, A underscore Bunsel. Last but not the least, do subscribe to our newsletters. See you soon in another video. Goodbye.